What's up, y'all? It's your boy Dawson from DD TV. I want to thank everybody for rating, commenting, and subscribing. And for those of you who haven't subscribed, go ahead and subscribe and hit that little bell so you can get a notification when my videos uh, come out when I uh, put them out on YouTube. All right, finally, a pastor who finally gets it and a pastor who finally has the guts to step down when they make a mistake. I didn't think no pastors were doing that anymore these days with all of the scandals that were going around, but not in this case. I'm going to let y'all watch this video and I'll be back. Back with my commentary. Good morning. <clears throat> Good morning, church. Good morning, Pastor. Approximately a month ago, I came before you to announce that I would be taking three month sabbatical. Well, I'm here today to give you an update. I have uh, struggled with I have struggled with and am correcting and making amends for serious personal misjudgments which have affected my life and my family and which I deeply regret. I have betrayed the trust of God, my family, and you, my church, and for that I am so sorry. Therefore, I must step down as pastor at this time. Please let me finish. Please let me finish. I must step down as pastor at this time. I have submitted myself to my father's, our apostles' plan of restoration. Chief among those being that I will be attending Sunday service starting next week and throughout the year so that I can hear the word and be restored in order to fulfill the call on my life to ministry. In closing, I would like to ask that you respect my and my family's privacy while we work through this personal situation. I thank you all for the support you've given me. As pastor, I love you all, and I solicit your prayers during this difficult time. Love you. Love you. God is great. God is great. Who are you guys? God got you. True man of God. All right, let's go in. Now, first thing I want to say is to all the women who uh, love the pastor and, you know, the pastor can't do no wrong. And those women who was up there saying, oh, we love you. We respect that. And, oh, pastor. Oh, a great man. I respect that. I hope y'all do the same thing when y'all husbands mess up and when y'all boyfriends mess up. Because it seems like the dudes at home can't get no kind of love and no kind of affection. And the pastor get all the affirmation, the confirmation, the celebration, the jubilation and everything goes to him. But y'all don't get that to y'all husbands and y'all men at home so make the uh the, the the playing level equal okay now uh psh, look i respect what uh fred price price jr did right here and let me give y'all a little background of this dude right here this is the son of world-renowned teacher and minister apostle frederick casey price and his uh wife dr betty r price pastor frederick kenneth price who this is right here, Junior, is the head of Crenshaw Christian Center, thus completing a unique trinity of faith by serving side by side with his trailblazing parents. And let me tell y'all something. His parents have been doing this for 
for years. I remember watching uh, uh, Dr. Price of when I was a little boy and Dr. Uh, Betty Price as well. And, you know, coming home and just being so so like uh, captivated by them speaking because I went to a church where people were preaching and talking about and the Lord gonna give him and they started shouting and then you leave church like what the world did I just hear but it was something different about uh, Fred, <laughs> Dr. Fred Price because he actually taught instead of doing all that hooping and stuff and sometimes y'all that's really what we need we need to sit our butt down and listen and then go study to show ourselves approved and I appreciate this guy whatever this misjudgment was that happened in his life and him and his family life, his personal misjudgment. He didn't go on to say what that was. I appreciate a man, a black preacher standing up with his wife by his side and saying, look, y'all, son happened. I'm not going to go into it, but I'm telling y'all, it's going to cause me to step down for at least a year. I respect God. I respect my wife. I respect my other family, my mother, my father. And I respect my church to let y'all know I got to get myself together. And I think this should be for those for his church and for people who watch stuff like this and even watch this video, a wake up call for us to know that even when we mess up, sometimes, hey, we got to take a break. Sometimes in relationships or anything, hey, let's just reevaluate to see where we're going because it may not be that we're supposed to be together. Not saying that's what their problem is, but even with a, a job situation or a business or even with a friendship, everybody has to reevaluate and go back to, hey, what was the initial purpose for me doing this? Or if I messed up, what in me caused me to mess up? Now, I don't know if it was infidelity. I don't know if it was some other. I don't know. He didn't go into it, so I'm not going to speculate. But what I am glad is that he had the courage to stand up in front of his church and in front of the people who watch their broadcast and be a real man and take responsibility for his actions, whatever those actions or misjudgment, personal misjudgments were. And also, for the Christians out there, you know, especially the judgmental ones who always want to throw scriptures up on people, YouTube page and Facebook and Instagram page and tell people they going to hell and God don't love them and all this kind of stuff. Look, all your righteousness is this filthy rags. Ain't nothing you can do or you can't do to keep nobody in or out of heaven. All right. So all of that stuff y'all saying, especially on my YouTube page, everybody quoting the scripture a day, take them scriptures and make them work in your own life. And then you shut your mouth and we'll see the fruits of the spirit in your life and we'll ask you questions all right how about that and for this gentleman right here like i said the same kind of mercy and stuff that y'all give to the pastors be that kind of way when y'all see people mess up in real life because it seems like the church people get all the mercy but they're the, the, the homeless lady ain't getting nothing the person who was a prostitute who trying to get herself right don't get nothing the person who was diagnosed with hiv or aids don't get no kind of love oh they nasty they the devil you don't know that and it's just so sad because so many Christians and yeah, I'm coming for y'all, y'all so-called Christians who like to get up on all these social media sites and just put people down. But we don't see none of that fruit in your life and you can't even keep your own children together and your husband don't even want to come home to you. That same mercy that you want to extend to the pastor and to the people in your church because you think your church is just it. Do that for the rest of the world. But matter of fact, don't extend nothing to us because we looking to God to be the author and the finisher of our faith, not you. On another note, I want to thank everybody for listening, for rating, for commenting, and subscribing. Fred Price Jr., I respect you just for doing that, man. You're going to be all right. In conclusion, Fred Price Jr., uh, you know, your family's standing by your man, so, you know, um, they standing with you, so you, you, you got half the battle won right there. And you say you're stepping down a year to get right with God, so, you know, hey, handle your business, man. But, hey, don't let nobody keep their foot on you. And I don't like that when people want to put their foot on you or beat you back in the corner and remind you of what you did in your past. Now, nah, when you put it out there, when you when you've already so-called served your time or, you know, made amends, no matter what you did in the past. And this goes for a lot of my listeners. Don't let people keep bringing your past up. Oh, remember, I did this for you. Or I remember you did this. Or I remember you did this. Look, you got to set me free. And if you don't let me free, set me free, I'm going to emancipate myself and be free. Don't let people hold you back based on what they know about you or stuff you did, because people will keep you hostage forever. It's over. It's done with. Let's move on. Until next time, it's your boy Dawson. Take care of yourself and each other. And most of all, hey, love yourself even if nobody don't love you. I'm out.